Okay, I've started recording. Dr. Ruckman, whenever you're ready to start. Okay, welcome everyone to our October 7th meeting. And uh, does anyone, would anyone like to approve or do a uh, motion for uh, the minutes? Is everybody taking a, a minute to look at them? I move approval. Second. So do we have a second? Uh, Nelson, Nelson second. OK, great. All uh, in all of them in pro approving the uh, minutes uh, say aye. 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 Great. OK, let's move on to the report from the subcommittee. Jason, I'd like to start with you. Would you uh, would like to go ahead and unmute and then we can uh, hear what you have to say? Yes, sir. Uh, the subcommittee has been meeting with some degree of frequency so that we may have had two meetings since our last Board of Health meeting. I do not recall, but the bringing it entirely up to date, the essential issues of the uh, uh, crisis mental health services, the comprehensive mental health is moving uh, and the city is moving aggressively to uh, try to secure an agreement uh, between those two bodies for use of some land that the city owns uh, next to center point. Uh, it requires a memorandum of understanding agreement of center point because it's part of the original TIF from years ago with the hospital, uh, a, a survey and a site plan, but I, uh, the meeting uh, yesterday indicated uh, short timeline and progress, and so please, I think we were all pleased with that. Uh, the CMH uh, has funding from the Missouri Department of Mental Health, and and that comes with uh, timelines uh, that that we're going to make sure we're we're monitoring and meeting. Uh, CMH is is going through a potential merger with a. A, a comprehensive mental health group, primarily out of Southwest Missouri. Uh, they're cover 25 counties. They're substantially larger than comprehensive mental health. Uh, Julie was quite pleased with the potential merger as it should offer uh, greater access to uh, services and, 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 you know, a little larger gives you a better employee opportunities, you know, benefits and such it was the way I assumed her remark. She said it would be good for employees as well. Uh, it appears as though she will remain as the point of contact uh, in our area uh, with some sort of regional leadership role. Uh, and and she had appraised uh, the the potential merger partner of of our engagement, both on the building and as well as our hope for uh, an emergency sort of response, a more formalized emergency response uh, program. Uh, she has in the material she provided the subcommittee, uh, her continuing intent to have two or three people in that role. Uh, the city has moved forward with uh, uh, funding for uh, one firefighter, paramedic or EMT. Uh, Chief Short should be getting back from uh, leave fairly shortly. And I think we're expecting his planning, Christina may correct me, but in the next three to four weeks. Um, and, and so he's getting back up to speed, both on site and involvement with comprehensive mental health. Uh, the discussion on the general health uh, the core issues, uh, Christina had a, a very well done uh, a two page memo of, uh, of, of objectives, goals for the next uh, one, two, and three years out uh, that provided a nice framework for discussion. Uh, it seemed to be real positively received by uh, those in the room. There were some questions on one component, but uh, the smallest item on the list and, and, and you know, there's something next year to talk about. Uh, so I, my personal view was I thought it was well done and, and, and uh, helped uh, help people think about uh, growth to get the health department back where it needs to be. Um, and there was good discussion around uh, 
the health assessment, um, particularly pleased the, the uh, mayor uh, seemed interested and there was quite a good discussion on that. Uh, Christina may weigh in and correct me when I'm done here, but my recollection was you need health assessments uh, not only so you can do the work, so you know what's going on in your community and tracking changes, data drives good decisions, but also uh, if we're interested in getting the health department accredited again uh, at some stage, uh, that's essential. And I'm certainly one voice for the, getting accredited is that I, I think in the world of public health, uh, that's going to become a necessity you know, in the next five to 10 years. And so keeping that on our, our event horizon, I think is important. Uh, so I, I thought it was, uh, I thought the, the meetings have been productive. Uh, feedback from the two elected officials attending have been positive and supportive that we're moving in the right direction. So I, Ralph or Dr. Morris or Christina may wish to correct me on something there. I'm done. No, very good, Jason. I think you covered it pretty well. Terry, you have anything to add that you'd like to sh share? Um, just a little bit about the proposed merger with Burrell. Uh, that seems to be a, kind of a win-win situation uh, for comprehensive mental health. And I think it'll be a win-win situation for the city. Uh, Burrell is, is aware of uh, the city's interest in an emergency mental health response team. Um, and Julie did say that they already have a proposed site visit to a functioning mental health response team. Uh, this one's in Aurora, uh, Colorado, uh, which is uh, kind of, it, it's it's like Independence to Kansas City. Aurora is a kind of a eastern suburb of, of Denver, and they share some of the same inner city areas that uh, have fairly high frequency of uh, mental health uh, calls um, and uh, that's a brand new program that Aurora just got started uh, with a nice grant uh, and so uh, they have a site visit already planned for that which will be very beneficial for us. I think one of the other advantages of having uh, comprehensive mental health slash Burrell involved is that uh, one of the problems the city has is our population with 120,000 or so folks that's a lot of expense to have teams that are available to go. Uh, comprehensive mental health also covers Blue Springs and Lee Summit and Odessa and other communities. And so if they derive that program and drive that program, uh, then that may give them more uh, financial ability to make it a reality. So, uh, and then everything Jason said is true. Hmm. Okay, Christina, would you like to say anything? Uh, Jason and Dr. Morris said everything. It was a good meeting. Uh, I think our next meeting is planned for approximately a month from yesterday. So we will hopefully meet up again and have some good progress on all of those those items. Okay. And I agree the meetings have gone well and um, there's a lot to do. Okay, let's see. Conversion therapy ordinance review and recommendation. Um, okay, Christina, would you like to address that? Sure, I know we talked about this um, in September very briefly, but we did not have a quorum present. Um, I sent you guys a copy of the ordinance that's being considered. The Human Relations Committee requested that the Board of Health look it over and give a recommendation on whether it should be approved. Um, and so I have brought it back to you guys for an official uh, recommendation. Um, what we would need is essentially a motion and a second and then a vote. Um, I know that there had been a question last time about whether it was written in such a way that um, medical care could be sought uh, for those needing treatment. And yes, our, our legal team stated that it was not written to prevent that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, is there, are there any questions, any discussion that uh, anybody would like to present? 
Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion to approve? I'll move approval. Second, anybody? Second. Okay. All in favor, oh, uh, Christina, let's have a ro roll call. Thank you. Dr. Ruckman? Yes. Lori Halsey? She may not be able to unmute herself right away. Um, we'll come back. Dr. Wingert? Yes. Jason White? Uh, yes. Dr. Ruddy? Yes. Dr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Nelson? Yes. Dr. Muleman? I don't believe he's on. Lori Halsey? Yes. Okay. Dr. Okay. Ruckman, all present, approved. Motion passes. Okay, we can forward that on to the appropriate people. And now, um, board vacancies and discussion of possible code change. The discussion is um, primarily around the idea that once we started talking to Julie at the Comprehensive Mental Health uh, Program uh, Center, it became kind of obvious that we're looking at a long term relationship and uh, it just seemed to make sense that we would have a person with that particular skill and uh, knowledge uh, on the board and so um, I'd like to suggest that uh, we consider that if you've read the uh, the um, changes you can see uh, it's not significant but it definitely would get the job done and the language was pretty simple to, to correct and modify. Yes, yeah, so there were two changes. I, I added in um, the requirement for a mental health practitioner. Um, and then I also made a change. It had talked about in here as a business location it, within independence. That's been interpreted in the past that individuals must either be a resident of the city or must own a business within the city. And when we were first talking to Julie about it, it became evident that Julia CEO does not own comprehensive and that that's a very similar case for a lot of medical or mental health practitioners in independence is they they don't own a business they may practice there um but you know that that is their occupational location but not ownership so i was trying to make a slight change to the wording to allow us to to open that up a little bit if somebody has better verbiage please let me know otherwise I can go forward and see. Um, I should warn you guys, it's not going to be an immediate process either. This will have to be routed through the law department. Um, it would then have to go to before council. Because it is part of our city code, it would uh, need two different separate readings. So it would take at least a month to work through the council process. Then it would take effect and we would be able to move forward. So. I don't want anybody to think that next week we're going to have this done. And I should also bring up. In. Yeah. I also should bring up um, not to be lazy, but I plan on taking off some time. So it, it may not be my top priority before I leave for vacation. She's finally uh, taking a break. I am. I'm, I'm going to try to take off for two weeks, but then. This will be a top priority when I get back to get it before council and I'll try to send it off to our law department whenever if you guys decide to approve it, send it off to the law department before I leave so that it's ready and waiting in my inbox when I get back. Jason here, I, I'll make the motion if you want it, Ralph. I, I like, I think it's important to add the mental health practitioner to, to the list and, and make the tweak so we can latch on to folks who practice and, and if Christina's got the verbiage and law department will confirm it. And, and if not, they'll come back with a suggestion because they'll know our intent. So I, I would move we forward this on and in further into the process. Do we have a second? 
I'll second. Okay, uh, Christina, if you'll take a roll call. Dr. Ruckman? Yes. Lori Halsey? Dr. Wingert? Yes. Oh, I saw Lori unmute for a moment, so. Yes. Jason White? Yes. Dr. Ruddy? Yes. Dr. Morris? Yes. Dr. Nelson? Yes. Dr. Muehlman? Okay, all present have approved. Okay, motion passes. All right, uh, let's see what's next here. Discussion on COVID. Um, Terry, um, what do you have to share with us from the COVID corner? Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Um, it, it's been kind of an interesting few weeks. Uh, we reached 700,000 deaths. I think it was 704,000 deaths, which is very disheartening. Uh, but for the first time in, in uh, a couple months, uh, new COVID cases nationwide have actually started to fall. We've had it falling in our in our metro area, but not nationwide. Uh, so that's an improvement. Uh, with our regional data hub, uh, we're down about 20%. We're still having about 438 new cases per day. That was today's number. Uh, that's up where it was uh, in the spring and, and began last fall. So uh, we're not out of the woods yet. Uh, if you look at um, sorry, uh, if you look at daily hospitalizations, the uh, area is hospitalizing about a hundred new patients a day, which again is a decline. It's it's not a rap as rapid a decline as as the rise was, but it mirrors. Uh, what we saw uh, in the uh, early spring. So hopefully we're headed in the right direction. Uh, this is just the Jackson County uh, for the four hospitals that we're looking at. We're dealing uh, with about nine hospitalizations per day, which is down significantly uh, from what it was previously. So that's all a, a good thing. Uh, this is the death. Uh, we're averaging about six deaths per day in the, in the metro area. Uh, about one of those deaths per day is in Eastern Jackson County. Uh, so in one of the uh, four hospitals that serve us. This is from the Independence website. Um, we're running about almost a 12% positivity rate of our testing, which is up a little bit. Uh, we've had two deaths in the last 14 days. Uh, my zip code 640 Five five still leads the race in the most uh, uh, cases, which is uh, really exciting for me. Uh, this little uh, six four zero one five comes in a, a close second. However, uh, vaccinations are actually doing pretty well. Um, we're still only about fifty four percent have initiated vaccination, and only forty eight percent of the population is vaccinated on the Missouri side. Um, this data was updated this morning, and so far they've given uh, 124,000 or so uh, third doses, which is also uh, a good thing. If you look at age distribution, it's pretty much unchanged except for the younger age groups are slowly increasing. Those at most risk of uh, dying from COVID are still in the, in the high 80s as far as initiating immunization and about 80% have completed uh, immunization and uh, the young people, which actually represents the folks <coughs> dying, uh, are uh, starting to catch up. I've, I've been looking for and had tremendous data finding data from uh, Missouri or the metro area as far as uh, breakthrough and what the risks are. 
This data comes from uh, Seattle and King County and is uh, current data. Uh, <coughs> and uh, people who are not fully vaccinated have three times the risk of being positive, have 12 times the risk of being hospitalized, and 16 times the risk of dying. Uh, although it's interesting, that was since January. If you look at the last 30 days, those numbers were very different. Uh, people who were not fully vaccinated had eight times the chance of contracting COVID, 46 times the chance of being hospitalization, hospitalized, and 78 in times increased risk of dying from COVID. Uh, they're having some significant problems in uh, Washington State at the moment in the last 30 days. Is, not been good for them. Just a other, couple other quick comments. Uh, this is a photograph of the new name tags that they wear at uh, Cox uh, Hospital in Branson, Missouri. Uh, they've been wearing these now for a couple weeks. Uh, there's a little button on it, and this is the uh, Facebook post from the 17th of September, and they reported that assaults on their staff by patients and family have tripled in the last year. So they've given all employees in the emergency room, uh, physicians and nurses, uh, and in the ICU and high risk areas, uh, an emergency response button that they can push that will summon uh, security to support them. Uh, I haven't seen much in our local uh, uh, news media about that. Daryl may have a few comments. Hopefully we're uh, being a little better uh, at that. Uh, this is a little slide that looks at the uh, incidence of uh, COVID in uh, children, uh, zero to 16. Uh, we are still uh, up there, but we've gotten below the 200,000 cases per day. Uh, and we're starting to trend down in about the last week and a half or two weeks, um, which is uh, good news. Uh, Pfizer did submit their recommendation to the FDA today uh, to allow uh, vaccines uh, for uh, children 5 to 11. Um, we'll see where that goes. I think the likelihood of that is uh, fairly high. Uh, the response as far as what we'll see as far as vaccination in that age group is still pretty much up in the air. Uh, I know quite a few folks who are interested in their children being vaccinated. Part of the initial study was done at Children's Mercy, and their part of the study that I'm familiar with um, showed a fairly good acceptance and very good response. So that's all I've got to say. Okay, any questions for Dr. Morris? Okay, any comments? <clears throat> All right, Christina, would you have, do you have anything you'd like to add? Well, I want to yield my time to Dr. Nelson, who can talk about what's going on at Center Point. Okay, great. Hey, good evening, everybody. Yeah, just real quickly, I would say that most of what we're seeing is mirroring uh, the data Terry just reported on. Um, our overall um, uh, inpatient cases have been between 20 and 30. Uh, when we were in the peak, we were running 60 or better. Um, the unfortunate trend we've seen is a broader affliction of fatal COVID cases in the younger population. We lost a 20-year-old, a couple of 30, 20s-year-old, a couple of 30s-year-olds, and several 40s-year-olds, um, which had not been something. And when I was on the citywide call, that's been a similar experience um, across the city. So largely a story of the unvaccinated population, depending upon which health system or institution, uh, somewhere in the 85 uh, plus percent of those who end up either in the ICU um, or expiring are um, not vaccinated. Um, the subset of vaccinated um, deaths that we've seen have been small, but have typically had significant underlying um, comorbid health conditions. Um, hands down, the most common um, a risk factor appears to be obesity, and then all of the chronic health problems fall in behind that, diabetes, heart disease, malignancy, um, that tend to predispose the population to poorer outcomes. But 
Uh, what's been different about the Delta virus, I can't remember if we talked about it last time, is that once you um, deteriorate to critical status ICU, it appears, and we don't have the numbers fully baked yet in the city, but it appears you're dramatically at higher risk actually to um, die versus the previous non-Delta variants. Uh, we had better success getting those folks back out of the ICU or off the ventilator, although it's been difficult um, throughout the whole pandemic, but really troublesome and incredibly disheartening and contributing to high levels of burnout across at least our city, I assume in other markets, to uh, the burnout in the uh, intensive care uh, setting. All, all providers and folks um, who are trying to tend, it's just overwhelming, um, to be honest. So, so I think that's the tough side. The good side is is that we are feeling the the easing with the the improved overall numbers. Our positivity rates are down, um, and just our raw case counts, as I reported earlier, are improving. Um, I think our fear is that we, um, you know, let up too soon, which many of us believe is what happened previously with our interventions to try to curb this. It's far from over, and I don't think anybody dreamt we'd pass 700,000 deaths and. Um, so I think there's still a ways to go. A lot of forecasters trying to project the fall and winter. And to be honest, I'm just not sure I know uh, what's going to happen. So I think we're, we're encouraging our staff to just stay the course and, you know, continue to, you know, fully utilize all protective strategies to decrease transmission. So I don't know if there's any questions for uh, me. If not, uh, uh, appreciate Terry's updates always too. It's, fascinating just epidemiologically and I think there'll be a, a lot of look back over this uh, time in history and a lot more to be learned from it. Any other comments or thoughts? <clears throat> Thank you Dr. Nelson. You're welcome. Hearing no other further discussion, do we have a motion to adjourn? Second? I second. Okay, meeting is adjourned. Have a good vacation, Christina. I promise not to text you. I'll try not to as well. <laughs> All right, take care. No worries, thank you. Bye, everybody.